Welcome to Doc NYC's inaugural Spring Showcase, our mid-year celebration of documentary films and series. I'm Brandon Harrison, programmer at Doc NYC, and it's my pleasure to be speaking with executive producers Fabian Tobak, Karis Jagger, and Shoshana Guy, who's the showrunner of Netflix's High on the Hog. How are you guys doing today? Great. Good. Thanks Happy. for having yeah, us. Yeah, awesome. So I had the pleasure of enjoying uh, watching all the episodes of the program and delving into the information about the history of African-American food that I didn't, wasn't even aware of. And when I think about that, I think about how that began and it makes me interested about that first meeting or that touching, that ET touch when you guys met Jessica Harris. Can we just talk about how that began and how that story started and how did it feel to get her blessing? Well, well, it, it started way before we even met with Jessica. Karis and I are Lo Los Angeles based. And um, it, it, it began with the, the, a friend of mine had sent the cover of the book to me and said, read this, it's gonna change your life. And we sat down in one sitting and read the book and cried and were like, we have to make this a series. This is a documentary series. So it started with emails initially. And um, we wrote an email to Jessica. And, you know, it's sort of like in Hollywood, there's that hurry up, wait and see, or hurry up and wait. And I was like, how long before I follow up before sending the letter to Jessica? How long should I follow up? And literally, as I'm on the phone, after I'd sent it, she had called and was like, this is the best email I've ever gotten. And so, you know, that was the beginning of the journey of uh, bringing High on the Hog to fruition. And might I add, when I um, first, um, you know, got introduced as a showrunner, you know, I have to create a relationship with her. She's sort of like this grand dame of the food world, right? And so I was like, okay, you gotta get yourself in order. And it's funny because I, I was okay, she's gotta like me and I gotta make this work. And you know, and she lives like three blocks away from me in her, in her place, <laughs> three blocks away. And now we're super good friends. I walk over there all the time um, during the pandemic. I was like, come out, we gotta go for a walk. So um, it's funny now to look back on that. It's, it's been a long journey. And wonderful. Uh, in, in that vein, what was it like that, that on set? You know, it's like, Want you to present, be a like part of this visually. What was that moment like with her? I we think <laughs> Africa. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, I th I think the incredible thing about Jessica, she's so knowledgeable about this work, and it's such it's so it's so beautiful to get her on camera, and she speaks in sound bites. She's, you know, she brings like incredible things out of people. I mean, she brought so much out of Steven, obviously, um, in that first episode. And she's a powerhouse. I mean, she, you know, she has ex vast experience and it really shines on camera. Yeah, she's sound soundbite machine, as we like to call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh, this is great. Just one sound after the next. Exactly. Well, I mean, obviously we have the high on the hog as a phrase. I mean, long before Jessica had, you know, put it in the book, it existed, but everyone seemed to come back to that and have a personal understanding of that phrase. I'm curious about bringing a book to life and having it be so expansive and influential and be like, this book changed my life. And now I have to parse it. I have to hire people that can parse it. I can have to build a team that can understand what this looks like. What was that process like for all of you coming from the very beginning to working on set and knowing that you have this great story and maybe this part might not be involved or you guys wanted to build this locale and what was it like putting that puzzle together? Well, well, we really, you know, initially Karis and I just kind of went page by page and pulled out like all these beautiful bits. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I lost my train of thought there. Karis, will you oh, um, <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll say like, I'll say one of the best things was is our initial pitch to Netflix was to Adam Del Deo. And he said, you guys should really connect with Roger Ross Williams. Yeah. And, like, tell us, and, we, and so we took that information and we were like, we need to find Roger Ross Williams. And believe it or not, we did. And then we came back to Adam and we were like, we got, look who we got. So... Yeah. 
um, Roger was the beginning of, you know, shaping the, 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 the crew and that started with Shoshana and Shoshana built on that. If you want to jump in off that. Yeah, so first of all, these guys are yeah. being humble because they gave me, they dumped like spreadsheets. I mean, they did <laughs> so much research. They were like here, which is not <laughs> usual for a showrunner, right? Usually you're starting with, with really nothing. So they had all this material and had already identified a lot of people that they thought would be valuable um, and were really spot on with a lot of that stuff. So I give major props and then they're being, um, they're being humble. Aww. But, um, <laughs> and, but um, yeah, we, you know, Roger, I was like with my sisters in Croatia, like living the life on the Adriatic. <laughs> so I was like, yes, I'm on vacation. And I get this call, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm calling in. Um, I was like, well, this sounds interesting because I come from a hard news background. Um, and a lot of the work that I've done is, you know, race and justice, criminal justice, real, real hard news stuff that's not particularly um, joyful. Um, and so I thought food show, huh? Like I, I wouldn't think that I would do a food show, but it's so much more than that in the sense that this is history. Um, and all this um, history that we don't know, our history that we don't know, um, through the lens of food. So, you know, it's really um, joyful to put it together and to be able to build the team. And then, you know, just team building is something I really enjoy. And it's just, it's, it's just about the right chemistry and the right combination of people to come together. Um, and so we just, you know, we built, we had two couple producers, APs, you know, several editors. Um, and yeah, just brought it all together and had a had a ball. Well, you're, you're yeah, and we were really we were really specific about. Um, I remembered where I was. The start of, um, we were really specific about the kind of story that we were looking to tell. So I mean, it was a real convergence. We, um, Karis and I, started a a food blog, and part of that was just to kind of research people in this space, uh, the innovators, you know, in the African American. Uh, cuisine and part of the African diaspora who were doing all these innovative, but also activists like Omar Tate and Gabrielle Etienne. And um, it really gave us an opportunity to kind of tell that story in the way that we wanted to. And with Shoshana and Roger, we were so across all on the same page in regard to that story. So it kind of made it when, you know, Shoshana, when we gave her all those spreadsheets, she wasn't like, what what who is this you know she was like in sync and then she brought on you know ben harney the real mother shucker and it's just like everyone just was like so perfect it could have gone in a lot of different directions but it really was so beautiful the way everyone worked on it as a team on this project uh doc nyc obviously is a new york film festival and i've had some real mother shuckers myself so when i saw it i was like oh, wow this is awesome like i'm I go to their their cart all the time, so very. Oh, that's great! You know, I met him and stuff. Well, that's thanks to Shoshana. Um, yeah, well, because it's in my neighborhood, and I was like, "Wait, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is divine intervention." You were so excited. Well done. <laughs> um, but with that point, I wanted to talk about the way narratively it's structured because that episode in particular, I felt, was very meaningful in in telling, and you guys putting that story together, because if you told me there was going to be a story about the history of African-American food, I wouldn't think there was going to be a, an entire, not only episode, but a through line throughout the series about the skill and technique and all levels of this cuisine and what it is and what it can be and how it can be different. How did you guys decide on that portion of the story and telling so many stories that we may have never heard about? Specifically to the third episode? Or no, the well, both, but that through line is all the way through there. Like, I, as a New Yorker, we see this story a lot about what Southern cooking is and things like that. And this is a thing where it's like oysters. What's that? And then we see the history of that. Yeah. I mean, the book is really kind of a touch point for that, right? If you keep going back right. to the book, then it gives you those touch points where you go, okay, this is what we have to hit. I'm like a stickler for structure. My, any of my teams will know, I wanna know kind of where we're going because great filmmaking um, and great series are done in the transitions. How do you get from one idea to the next? And you have to shoot for that. You have to know what it is that you're doing so that when you get back in the edit room, you're like, aha, here it is. Um, so we, I, you know, we kept going back to the book and then what we would do is, you know, 
the producers and I would create these outlines and then we would kick them over to Fabian and Karis. They would kind of look at them. You know, we would punt them back and forth until we kind of had this outline and all these points that we wanted to touch. And that's structurally sort of how we set it up. Thank you. I'd like yeah. to kind of elucidate that for me. Um, <laughs> talking about building structure for, for Fabian and Karis who have worked on projects together prior to this, like what does it mean for your work to have this project now and seeing where you know, you've grown work on projects together and, and this one, uh, how do you feel about it? And you feel satisfied where this, this journey has taken you when you think back, at, you know, when you guys first started pairing up. <laughs> wow. Um, Karis, you can start because I'm, uh, I have so much to say and I, I don't want to suck up all the air. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I think when we first got that email back from Jessica and we felt compelled to make a really beautiful um, doc series out of it, you know, we had a really elevated um, idea of what we wanted it to be. And as we were making it and realizing and getting like the dailies back and seeing it, like realizing that actually it was really coming together. And then when we were getting the edits and it was getting like better and better and more beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful, the show, like it's shot beautifully. The music is beautiful. Like it encompasses so many things and it is, it like couldn't be more perfect from the jumping off point that we thought about it. And it took so many people to get it here, but it, it's, it's like a remarkable piece of, you know, doc, doc making and we're hella proud. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think our intention from, you know, it, it's definitely by far the biggest project that we've undertaken. Um, uh, but we knew going into it, you know, like either Jessica is going to say yes to us <laughs> and it's going to be like a Sisyphean journey or she's going to say no and we've been spared that. So we couldn't be more delighted. I mean, it's just really... Um, you know, the tenacity that we had in getting this man. I mean, we were just like, you know, could not go back to Jessica and say, we couldn't sell it. You know, it's <laughs> like, we just were really intent on like, this story needs to be told. And by hell or high water, we're going to get it made. And, um, you know, the moment we, we pitched to Roger and he was like, yes, we were just like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh my gosh you know it was it was it, it was wonderful and uh, you know I you know and, and we've always felt this way we have like real gut instincts about material and um it's it was so kind of like satisfying and gratifying to go like okay yeah you know you're right on this and so it's been nice to be in the flow of of uh of our our exceptional taste at this point <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, very well said. Right. Uh, there was a, a mention, Karis, of, of, of editing and things like that. And for all of you, I'm curious, after seeing this grow as a process in an expansive project, is there something that us viewers are not, pri not going to be privy to to enjoy something beautiful or awesome or even quirky that was just gone on the room floor that is something that's dear to you guys' heart? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all the well, best stuff is I, in there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think I, there's things that end up not working, and so you yeah. take them out. You know, I think there were story. There were a couple storylines that we had in the Texas episode that, in the end, just didn't work. You know, um, I, I there. I don't think there's anything any of us regret, right? I think we just, yeah. you know. I, I think you're you're no you're crafting like cross stories and weaving things and suddenly like some things shine and some things have to get left behind. But that's you know, that's good editing. Yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah. You know, otherwise we could yeah. all be making three hour things. We right. won't mention who's making those that need editors. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're listening to the editors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, Shoshana put together a great team. You know, people are part of, 
you know, at the very best. So it's like, you know, we're not trying to, uh, we're just doing, working with our instinct and what we feel and then trust and trusting, you know, there is no point. A team is not about micromanaging the rest of your team. It's just like letting them shine and really do the best work. I mean, Jerry Henry, the cinematographer, it's just like, he's like, I have, a, you know, I'm going to do this. And it, and he did it. And it was so beautiful. And it, and it, I felt that way about like everything pretty much. Shoshana, can you talk a little bit about some of these journeys with the team? Uh, going out to Africa, well, like, oh my God. What, were, what was that there were so experience? many experience? <laughs> yeah, there were so many. I mean, you know, I always joke to say that, you know, one thing they can't say about me when I, when I finally leave this earth is that I did adventure. That is one thing they can say about me. Um, just, you know, I mean, Fabian and Karis were also in Benin with us and that was just an extraordinary journey. I mean, just so special to really feel um, connected and ancestrally, ancestrally um, to, to, to ourselves. Um, and I think everybody kind of had that experience. It was very emotional. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, the one day that we, when we were in um, a city called Ouida, which is um, a port basically where they took the enslaved from. And we came to this um, burial, like a burial site basically where, you know, a lot of people that didn't make it and were buried there. And so we were kind of standing on the bones of so many people. And we all just got super emotional. Oh. Um, and it I think it surprised even, I'm not particularly emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Karis and I share that. <laughs> we're kind of like, yeah, okay. Um, um, but, you know, we all ended up in tears, you know? And um, so there was, you know, those kind of emotion, very emotional connected moments um, for the team. And then, you know, just those crazy moments for the team that, you know, you're just like, really, I mean, we, we were in Texas at that rodeo and then the PA went to get coffee and hit a deer and then we came back, <laughs> we came back, we're like, you know, got a flat tire on the side of the road and just, you know, it's that kind of stuff where you're bonded. By the time you get to the end of it, you're all just family because it's like, you've been yeah. through so much, but we just had a wonderful time and, and um, I think as Fabian said, just immensely proud of what we were able to do together as a team. Yeah, yeah, it was really special. And, and, uh, and I, I keep going back to this one situation uh, or story. When we were in Africa, we would all have like production meeting at like 8.30 in the morning or whatever it was before we had to go. And, you know, everyone's on different floors and we end up like all of us crushed into the elevator. It's like Shoshana, Dr. Harris, Steven, Karis, myself, the DPs, the sound guys. And I took a little picture of us and it was just like, you know, we had labored for so long, just Karis and I in this like bubble and to like find myself with one of my closest friends stuck in the elevator, making this happen. And it was just like such a, like a transcendent moment of like the possibilities. And it was just such a beautiful moment. Shoshana, I have to send you that picture. Yeah, send it to me. I, didn't, I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, a, it's a good one. <laughs> oh, I mean, you guys talked a lot about the team and the, the power of that moment and bringing people together. And I guess we haven't really talked about the, the voice of the project, really, and, and Steven. And can you guys just talk about him yeah. and what he meant uh, to the project? Well, you guys I think, uh, you know, uh, Fabienne and I had 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 the idea to use him and we went and met with him and had coffee and he just like has an incredible quality of strength and power and listening and he brings out incredible stuff you know the scene with Jarell Guy where she's near tears and getting Gabrielle to like open up and tell her story he just has something that um brings a kind of gravitas to the project and he really really has so much respect for um jessica harris and her work and it's it's part of his work too so he really just was an incredible person that he's taking that journey and sort of a baton passed you know from jessica to him and then it becomes you know we're following his personal story um He's a beautiful person. Yeah. And, you know, I yeah. think what, you know, he talks a lot about food and empathy and that really comes across in the show. 
Yeah, I, I would like to, yeah. Yeah, it, you, you guys found him and then I adopted him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and no, he's, just, he's so, just, so you know, sweet. From a show running standpoint, and you know, um, and I think Roger would agree from a directorial standpoint, you know, he's just so easy to work with. You know, he's very, you know, it's kind of like he's he was green in the sense that he's a newcomer to this to this kind of storytelling. Um, but there was a beauty in that because you know he was so malleable, so 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 moldable, and he just took direction very easily, super laid back. Um, sometimes a little too laid back. We'd be like Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he he uh, yeah just to echo Karis just a lovely person to work with and um easy to be around just, we love him yeah yeah no he he it's so funny in that initial coffee he was you know he's he was like I love this book you know whatever I can do to help you I can make intros I want you to help to get this made and we're just like Dude, we're like interviewing you. He had no clue what was classic. going on. But that's but that's classic Stephen, and yeah. it's like and and that really comes across. He's he doesn't come off, you know, as like I'm taking you on this trip. You know, it's it's really his journey, and that sweet intimacy really comes across. It's really lovely. So obviously, this filmmaking journey didn't begin in the past year and a half. But what does it mean to sort of have this come out amongst uh, a 18 month time of, I don't know, racial upheaval or reckoning? And uh, what, what does it mean? Or is it, does it mean something or feel a little more poignant for you guys? Well, initially, you know, Karis and I had been working on, you know, more lifestyle branded content. And uh, I, and it was around the time of Ferguson um, with Michael Brown. and. And, and it, we were really, you know, the kids were bigger and we were really looking for something that we could sink our teeth into that was important. And, you know, I think it had, it was maybe six months, eight months later that the book came across and I was just like, here it is. You know, I have a food background, Karis has a history background. It, it was just kind of like the coalescence of like things that are important. Um, uh, to us so um i would love to say like we're late on this but you know not a lot of stuff has changed since then so it means a lot and it and it and it and it feels really important i feel like with all the racial injustices going on it's like this is a bit a bit of a, a little like corner of sunshine you know to to celebrate and i'm yeah yeah i, yeah. I think that's right you yeah. know like there's so you know <laughs> we're right now tending to just constantly be jumping and associating the black experience with suffering and and yeah pain. and you know that is true of our experience but what is also true of our experience is that we have contributed mightily to the very fabric mm -hmm. of the country and that we have you know offered so much joy to the nation and, and, and in this case through, through food. And so I feel like an immense pride in being able to mm. offer these stories to the world um, and you know, offer you know, to lay down the fact that we, we are contributor, contributors on so many levels. And you know, when you eat your mac and cheese, that's us. <laughs> when you slurp <laughs> your oysters, that's us. <laughs> so I feel proud. Yeah. We pitch this as empowerment cinema and like I feel like that's what it is, you know. Um we're 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 proud and and um this is it's coming at a perfect time. You know, and this is my last question and I feel free to expound upon it. And I'd love to end on a little bit of a lighter note. I don't want you to feel like you have to say everything about injustices of the world. But through reading the book and going on these journeys and learning a lot about yourselves, what dish or information about food did you learn the most and enjoyed the most or incorporating into your own cooking or meals? What bit of food knowledge on this journey that you enjoy the most, may use, may include, or hope that other people take away from the show? 
Can I just say yeah. my roux on the gumbo is fire these days? But I, I finally perfected the scraping <laughs> of the pan, like getting the just the real scraping down. Um, yeah, my gumbo, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of compliments. I feel like my gumbo's come a long way since the beginning of this morning journey. <laughs> You guys didn't know that, but I've been practicing. Uh, no, I did not it's, know that. It's something, I, I, it's something I that was New one York of my New Year's resolutions. My, one of my New Year's resolutions was to learn to make a better gumbo show. Oh, cool. So okay, I need I to get, get your roots. recipe. Creeping. Okay, yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I think, I think Brandon, the like for me, one of the things I really didn't know about was the rice history. Like I really didn't know a lot about the Carolina gold rice. I didn't know about how... Um, you know, the land had changed in terms of it, its structure. And I, I think, I can't remember what Michael Twitty says, something about the pyramids. Uh, anyway, whatever, I can't do that quote. Um, but I think that is fascinating. And that one pot meal that he did, fab, like, I would love to be camping somewhere and get my yeah crab and okra into a pot with some rice <laughs> yum that's my favorite yeah. uh you you took Karis you took the words out of my mouth I, I it's like Karis and I've done a lot of camping in fact one of my birthday gifts was a cauldron <laughs> to camp and when we when we when we, when we saw that like the dailies of that I was like oh my gosh we need to get a hook and we need to go you know camping and make that dish so um, I think it's just, you know, these are, sometimes we can take food for granted, you know, and this, and certainly the stories that are behind it, you know, we don't give it really two thoughts about uh, for most of the time. Um, I, I feel like especially poignant, it's just like, as Shoshana said, it's like that, the mac and cheese, that's us, but it's, there's a mindfulness and intention that, um, that I've, I br it, br I've, it has increased since I've worked on this for sure. Um, you know, what is the history behind it? Uh, now I live in downtown Los Angeles. You know, there's a huge uh, uh, Asian population and I go to, and it's like that is, it, there's a certain curiosity. It's like, it's not like just Chinese broccoli, it's, it's Gai Lin, you know, and taking that time and intention to kind of, appreciate or have that awareness with food, I think is, is something that I've t taken away from the series for sure. I have not made gumbo. It's the okra too, it's the okra. <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I gotta make some gumbo now. <laughs> I'll go to the okra. <laughs> well, I'll take it first, get that rope out. Yeah. Well, it looks like everyone yeah. has homework to, to make some gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us on Spring Showcase. Fabian, Kara, Shoshana, awesome yes. amazing work that I enjoyed thoroughly and I'm sure everyone else will as well. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you so Brandon. much. Thank you for having us, Brandon. Hi, bye. Okay, bye.